So again, what I mentioned to the class, because I forgot to start taping, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to build something similar to this right here starting next week. So it'll look like something like this. It, again, I don't care about pretty, but rather when we click check form, right now it's checking it, but it's using HTML5, and there's another copy of it in here that checks it, but it uses JavaScript. We're going to pretend at least that the user, it's possible for him, her, or they to totally turn off client-side validation. So we're going to validate solely from the server side. Now when you think about this, and I've mentioned this to you before, you should always be validating at both the client and the server. So you start to see the enormity when you've got a complex, just for a page, how much code you could actually be writing to both validate on the client side and validate on the server side. And as we've said before, why do you validate on both? You validate on both because it is possible if you're validating through JavaScript, and probably even if you're using HTML5, some of your validation will be through JavaScript, that a person can turn off JavaScript. All right? And so it'd be possible for them to bypass it. Anytime you do anything on the client, there will always be somebody trying to see if they can go in there and circumvent it to do what they want to do. All right? And if they don't, it's just because, in their opinion, your, uh, your site isn't worth it. I don't mean you, but you, you understand what I'm saying. All right. So I'm going to jump back into the book then. I'm just going to leave this screen up. I don't care about the screen so much. But we've, we basically have already gone through much of the material in Chapter 1. It was the getting started thing. All right. I mean, they start basic HTML syntax. I'm not going to talk about that. I do want to mention one thing to you, one thing, and, and I promise I'll keep it at that. I'm asking. I'm asking a question. So when I bring this up, Please look up here, and, and then I'll ask the question. No, of course it's not there. I keep saying that wasn't it. Oh, because I forgot the five. How many of you have ever used this or even know what it is? What, it, what this does, just so you know, if you go out to HTML5Boilerplate.com and you download it, it gives you, you, you can customize it, and it gives you a whole bunch of stuff. All right, it says basically, do you want to configure your thing so that it's an H HTML5 document? All right. Do you want it to be responsive? Do you want to include Bootstrap, which I'm going to talk about in just a second? All right. And what it does is, depending on these, it gives you a list of stuff, and you can, you can check off what you don't want. You, in other words, you only have to download what you want, but it downloads a lot of built-in functionality for you, a bunch of CSS, a bunch of JavaScript, a bunch of jQuery. All right. It's, so it's a nice thing. I'm going to show this to the first-year people. We're learning now how to write it ourselves. But we're going to get to, and I don't know, I probably don't have it here. I probably have it upstairs. But we're going to build a, a site in HTML, using HTML5 about HTML5, and we're going to use the boilerplate. So they have at least been exposed to it. All right. Going along with that, then, come on. how many of you know what Bootstrap is? Okay, then that's on me. Notice what it says. It's the most popular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript framework for developing responsive. So if you download it, it's got a bunch of stuff already pre-written. It's not exactly a library. All right? So that's another thing that you can use. All right? Then I'm asking you if you've ever heard this, heard of this. And it looks like I'm misspelling it. I'm not. Yes, I did. It's the word modernizer, but it doesn't have an E in it. That's another library that you can go and download. And when you download it, it's got material available for you where you can check and see whether or not, you, before you use any CSS5 feature or any HTML5 feature, you can run tests 
and it'll see whether or not your browser supports the feature. So there's a lot of libraries. There's a lot of really good stuff out there. All right, notice it said that's their, mo their, their little uh, logo there, modernizer front end development done right. It's a JavaScript library that detects HTML5 and CSS3 features that are available in the user's browser. All right. Eventually, when I become a little better versed in it, that's probably, rather than teaching Joomla in an advanced website design class, they'll probably, in that class, they'll, it'll probably be Bootstrap and Modernizer, you know, and all of this, all of this other stuff. That's what it'll be. And you'll, be, you'll have to use built-in frameworks, and you'll have to write your own site. That's what we'll move towards because that's what a lot of the web is doing because a lot of a a lot of the stuff that's in there you can use kind of a template for and b a lot of the people who are writing websites and doing web design don't know their butt from a hole in the ground if you ever saw that old uh, that old commercial that used to be i think it was for one and onecom the guy was sitting there with a with one of those books learn html in 24 hours and he, he was smiling he goes we are building a website you know, and you looked at him, you just knew, first of all, he looked like a smart ass. And second of all, it was like, you almost prayed that it was going to fail when you looked at the guy. But that's, that's the problem, is a lot of people who are doing this are either doing it themselves, but that's why there's companies, if, if you heard of this, Wix.com, they claim within about a half dozen clicks, you can create your own website. It's free. That, that would scare the hell out of me if I was you, thinking, then why would people want me? Well, they're, they're, the money that you make in that is not in this, but it's in customizing. All right. And they're trying to sell you. They'll, they'll, they'll give you a boilerplate type of thing. There's another one that's out there that's oneandone.com that's very much the same way. They do the same kind of stuff. All right. And they say they'll create it, what, from 99 cents a month. You know, and, and I I keep trying to tell my brother this because he when he gets involved in this stuff, that if you if you get something that's free or that's a dollar a month or whatever, sometimes it's the saying as the saying goes, you're getting what you're paying for. But I'm to the point where he's older than I am, and I'm I'm set in my ways. He's never been married, he's like 61, so he's about as set in his ways as somebody can possibly be. I can tell it to him five times. I could hit him over the head with a shovel, but all I do would be to dent the shovel. So, all right. And so when they show you this stuff in the book at the beginning of, the, of chapter one, and they're showing you a bunch of these forms, again, you say, well, I don't want to write all that stuff. You can get a whole heck of a lot of stuff done for you. All right. You can create websites through Bootstrap. And just so you know what Bootstrap, what's kind of cool about that is Bootstrap actually takes your page and it divides it into what are called 12 geographic zones. They're invisible, but it's like you've got 12 different points. You can use as many or as few as you want. And you can, you can, instead of having 12 little zones, you can have one zone of eight and one zone of four. But they always, whatever you use has to come up in equal 12 type of thing. And there's a lot of predefined work that you can do with that. It's got a whole bunch of stuff built into it. You can take buttons and you can, you can divide a button as being type button success so it's green right away. You can call it danger so it's automatically red. It does a lot of that kind of stuff for you too. All right. All right. Basic PHP syntax, we've looked at this the other day. Hopefully one thing that you remember from when we were doing this the other, whoops, when we were doing this the other day is what every, every time we're going to put PHP in, it'll be in those, whoops, in those tags, all right? That's your beginning and your end tag. If you do have a very short line of code, so if all I wanted to write in here for some reason was echo, hello, usually then you'll see it like, like that. But it's totally legit to put it on three lines like I showed you, too. The only reason, again, I'm breaking it up like I am is, uh, to me, uh, sorry, to me at least, it's much easier to read. If you don't agree with that and you want to write it the other way, that's, that's fine. All right. And they show you that PHP info script. We've already done that, so that's nothing new right there. They also mention on page 9 in your book that they say that you can use what are called the short tags. So, if you do that, you've got to go in again to the PHP INI file because these are these are set to false by default. They're commented out. You've got to uncomment that. Then you can use those. It's not recommended you do that. But 
this is something that you may or may not know. I'm just telling you this. Sometimes what you'll see is somebody will have written HTML. So they've got something like this. This is what we're getting to in a couple weeks, just so you know. So you'll put in something like this. Input type equals text. So it'll be a text box. What we've always done is stuff like this. Value equals hello. All right, something along those lines. Everybody, everybody understand what I mean by that, right? And you say, no, I, I had so-and-so. No, you, you should all get that. All right, but what if I wanted to be able to put something in there, have it go into PHP and check it, and if, if, if let's say I had a bunch of these fields, and if the field that one of the fields was invalid, I'd want it to go back to the page, but I'd want all those values to be in there. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I want it to retain its values. Then what I literally can do is I can put PHP in here. So I can come in and I can say, yeah. and I can say if is set, you know, what, whatever the name of the field is. All right, so if, if it is set, dollar sign, first name. All right, so I'm assuming I've got in something in there called dollar sign, first name. So if it's set, I can say that I want to I wanna echo that. So echo, I'm running out of room, dollar sign, first name. Okay, uh, and that, and that. Now, do you understand what this is doing? I'm asking you. Because imagine that you've got a text box, all right? I, I, this is going to be terrible because I'm going to attempt to draw a text box for you. But just imagine that we have a text box, all right? So it looks something like this. And you're supposed to put a name in there, okay? So that's part of a form. Everybody understand that, right? So let's suppose that there's a first name, there's another one of these for middle name, and there's another one for last name. We'll just leave it at that. And all three fields are mandatory. All right? And let's suppose that you put in the first name, you put in the last name, but you leave the middle name out. Okay, so you want it to come back again to, to the form. And you want what you put in for the first name and what you put in for the last name still there. You don't want the user to have to retype the stuff in. So what this is saying is, Okay, I attempted to validate, I attempted to go over to the server. So, if, if I went over to the server, then one of the first things I'm going to do using PHP is I'm going to say something like this. I showed you this the other day. Dollar sign first name equals dollar sign underscore post first name. So what, in essence, what this, I'll take your question in a second, but in essence, what this line right here is saying is, Okay, did I hit that line? You can say, well, what if it's empty? We're not talking about that right now. Exactly. But if there's anything at all in there, all right, then I want in here, I want it to be put in here. Does that, does that make sense? I'll take your question, but does that make sense? That's doing some, that's the beginning of server-side validation. That's what you have to understand. All right, you had a question. Yes, you do. Thank you. And it's, it gets kind of tough because sometimes with certain tags, what you're going to have at the end is you're going to have, it'll look like this. Let me just put it down here someplace. So you're going to have something that instead of looking like this, it won't have one of those end tags, so it'll look like that. So this is going to end your PHP. That's going to end your, you know, whatever, and then that's going to end your HTML. When we get to that point, some of the stuff you write in here is going to be pretty ugly. And when you get in and you start working with databases, you're using a combination of single quotes and double quotes. All right. And remember the other day, if you remember, so I, I'm starting to show you validation, but along those lines, because you're going to see it in the book. But if I do this, so I'm writing a simple PHP program. So let's, I'm going to get rid of, I'll just do it right here. So I'm going to say here, dollar sign age equals four, all right? And if somebody comes in here and says, echo, my age is dollar sign age. Well, one thing that you can do in, uh, in PHP is you can use either single or double quotes. So what I'm about to show you is legit both ways. Does everybody understand that? 
This is going. The difference, though, is this one's going to print out my. I'm sorry. My age is four. Single because double quotes say interpolate the value of the variable. Give me its value. Unfortunately, though, single quotes. This will print out my age is dollar sign age. See the difference? So what if I say the heck with you? I want to use single quotes. Can't I? The answer is yes. Then what you'll want to say is echo my age is, end your single quote, put a dot, which means concatenate, and do it like that. That one right there will print out the same thing as that. See the difference between those? So one thing you're going to have to be leery of is if you use, if you have a variable inside of, inside of double quotes, it'll interpolate it. It'll give you the value of the variable. But if you've got a val, if you've got one that's inside of single quotes, it won't do it. All right. All right. They talk some more about FTP in here. Then they actually do the run in chapter one here on page 13 of that PHP info. We already did that. They talk about sending text to the browser, and they have you write a program that looks like this. All right, And I could do this. I could literally save it. I'm not going to, but I'm not going to put in HTML5 and all the other goodies. I'm just going to put in here, just real simple, HTML, head. We're not even going to put anything in here. Title, no title, but just for completeness, we'll put in title, and our head, and our body, or begin our body, I should say. And then we'll put a paragraph tag in here that just says, hello, nothing else. All right, then we'll put in this. All right, then we'll end the body. And then we'll come in here, and we'll end the HTML. What that's literally going to print on your screen is, hello, in a paragraph. So it'll look kind of like this. It'll look like, hello. And then underneath it, it'll say, my age is four. Does that make sense to everybody? The reason I'm telling you this is one of them is being written using HTML, is one, and one of them is, being writ is written in PHP. Depending on the browser, they may look exactly identical, or the fonts may be different, or the font sizes may be different. To your end user, it probably won't matter to him, her, or they if you are writing something using PHP or HTML. All right, probably they could probably care less. The other thing to make it even more confusing, I just wanted to show you that it's totally possible to on the same page to have both of these. And I'll take your question, but you can also do this. I could have said down here echo and then put in double quotes or single quotes would work too. I could say hello. And that's using that's using PHP to write HTML. That's totally legit. To make it even worse, I can also do this. That one, when you single quotes, I've already used a double one. You can do that. And that's using. PHP to write JavaScript. Or you can break out of PHP by just ending your tag, write some JavaScript, then start PHP again. So the reason I'm telling you that is depending, you know, if you've got a company that's interspersing in their website PHP, JavaScript, jQuery, CSS, etc., especially if you've got a lot of people who are doing the development work, they're not all going to write with the same style. You can guarantee that's going to happen even if the company mandates that you write it this way. Unless somebody's there physically making them, it'll be written in different ways. And I don't know, Kelly, with any of the stuff that you did for Blaine's, if you, if you did any work of anybody, you, if you did any maintenance work of anybody's, but if you, I can guarantee you, if you did maintenance work of, of, of a file that was written to by two different people, there's no way they do everything exactly the same. There's not. Right. 
but in the bottom line, it's just like what we talked about this morning in the Joomla class, front end versus back end, right? And most companies are cool with that. As long as the front end is the same, they don't care how you're getting there. All right? But think about it this way, okay? If you remember, even when we were on the front page this morning, the, the home page, if you remember when I went in, and I went in and clicked one of the things, that, the hyperlinks there, it immediately came up and it said index.php. PHP is the engine that, that, is, that, is, that everything in Joomla runs on. And it does that in conjunction with MySQL. All right, so you're learning what, what's happening under the hood, so to speak. But all I'm trying to show you here is there's a lot of ways you can accomplish the same tasks. And you're, if you work long enough in the field, you're going to see people that do it different ways. They mentioned on page 9, and I, or 17, I should say, and I said this before. All right, if I do this, dollar sign age equals 10. All right, and then later, I accidentally fat finger, so later someplace in my program, uh, so later on, I write in dollar egg equals 12. What do you think happens? You don't get an error message. You create a new variable, just like you do in JavaScript. So now there's two variables. There's dollar egg that holds 12 and dollar age that holds 10. Yes. This here? No, you're right. I'd have to put a comment there. Yeah. But that, that's what I wanted to show you. Now, what's weird, and I think I said this the other day, I can do this, not that, this, or this, or for some god-awful reason this, that'll work. Because functions in PHP are not case-sensitive, but variables are. So again, if I come through here and create this, That's now a new variable. And you've got to understand that. You say, well, I, I don't make mistakes like that. Well, then you're not, you're, you're only subhuman. Because we all do it. I do it. I misspell something. This is one of those languages, you know, and, and typically, I, I think you'll agree with this. If you're working in HTML and you screw up, you leave off a tag or something, just ask John how many people were doing stuff like that yesterday. Usually, you get to a certain point, and either, either your output looks really weird or you don't get any. But it pretty much sends a telltale signal to you, something screwed up here. Whereas PHP, it just keeps going on. It just churns on. It says, oh, that's a new variable. OK. I mentioned the manual to you already. And they talk about sending HTML to the browser. I already showed you that. I told you about the different comments types. And we went over the basic debugging steps. All right, so variables. We talked about this before, but I'm saying, again, saying it again. Variables must start with a dollar sign. All right, that's a rule in this language. Now, one thing I never told you, all right, and good, bad, or indifferent, it's also legal in JavaScript to start variables with dollar signs. But imagine if you did that. Imagine I told you that, and you were using dollar signs all the time for JavaScript. Now you're using PHP to generate JavaScript. Now you're going to have dollar signs inside of dollar signs. Again, that might be a good career move for job security, but if somebody was going to maintain your code, that might, be, that might prove to be very confusing for them. All right, but again, you can do that if you want to. Also, I want to show you this. I'm going to show you another one of those real simple programs. You need three lines long, just like our other one. Two of the lines are the tags. That's the whole program. All right, we'll go. We'll go over it. In, oops, we'll go over it in just a second. I don't think I've ever had a semester where I've typed as badly as I've been typing this semester. So desktop. Get C colon. Xamp. HT docs. I'm just going to call this. This is a dumb name, but I'm going to call it this anyway. I'm going to call this server test dot html or dot dot php I'm sorry all right so server test dot php there it is you get the I get the coloring back is this still going yes it is so I can come in here
localhost slash server test dot php is okay wow that's a lot of garbage isn't it i'm going to show you how to fix it in just a minute that's all sorts of stuff that's automatically given to you it's automatically given to you and it's provided to you by php now i don't know unless maybe you're that good but i'm not it's very hard for me to read okay and the reason I'm showing you that is when we get to arrays, and if you print out arrays regularly, that's how they're going to look. Everything gets smushed together. Now, again, not to, I won't say it because I don't want to embarrass her if she didn't, but did you ever talk about back in the day when you were, had the class with Arinda, did you ever talk about pre-tags? Pre-tags mean pre-format. Right, watch the difference between what we've got here and any nice tag that starts like this has got to end like that, right? So let's see the difference in our output between these two. There's that, and there's that. I like that one better. All right. That's it pre-formatted. So when, when, if, you, if you ever go to print something out in, in using PHP and it really looks funky, the chances are you're trying to print out the equivalent of an object. All right, and when you do that, it does the best it can, but it just smushes it all together. The good news is when you look at this, look at some of the information that's in here. This is stuff that we'll come back to later. Document root. So that shows you that that's where the root of our system is. C colon backslash htdocs. All right. It shows you some other stuff in here. It shows you the name of the script. And there's a, you can use script name or this is an alias for the name of the script php underscore self all right which is the name of the current script why is that important if you want to if you want to force a user to stay on the page they're on one way of doing it is to send them to php self all right there's some other stuff in here again this may not look like much what do you get from here well using a combination of mozilla and gecko even if that wasn't there i'd know this was firefox i can look through here and i can figure out versions of things that are being used. All right, to some people this is referred to, and you may have heard the term before, you may not have, have as browser sniffing. And why would you want to browser sniff? Not for the smell, you'd want to browser sniff so that you could see if, be, be, um, depending on, on the version of browser somebody's using, you know you could or couldn't do something. Okay? This is important. It may not look like it, but if you're writing an international application, whereas in America, in the United States, and in much of the world, we read from left to right, correct? In Israel, they read from right to left. So if we knew that the language was Hebrew, we'd want to make sure that we were setting our stuff up. If we were doing an international site, that it would go from right to left as opposed to from left to right. All right. But that's just, those are freebies that you get put in here. And I, the, the other reason I wanted to show you this is this is one of those special variables that's referred to as a PHP super global. So everything that's available to the server is put in there. And I very quickly, and I, I mean quickly, we're actually buttoned up and we're getting close to where we have to start thinking about a break. So I want to put a bunch of these in here. That's enough. Some of the other ones that we're going to talk about in this class, we already looked at post a little bit. There's get. There's cookies. And there's session. And you'll use these a lot. Notice I've got an extra one. I want to come back to that in a minute. I just showed you that one. Now, we haven't posted anything. But once we do, all that, that stuff that I showed you before on that, uh, that JavaScript form, so if we create a local variable, dollar sign first name, dollar sign last name, all those, and we use post, and we print it out, all those variables will be in here. Does that make sense? Cookies, anytime we use cookies, they're in here. Anytime we use sessions, they're in here. Sometimes, sometimes when you're working in PHP, you don't care if the person did a post or they did a get. You don't care. Your code just doesn't care. It's a post or a get, but you don't know or you don't care. So there's also a special one of these super globals that's called request. And if you use request, it holds everything from dollar sign post and dollar sign get and dollar sign cookies. So it holds all that information. All right, those are right there, those are what? Six of the super global ver, uh, variables that you can use. All 
right? We're going to come back to those at a later time. So you're going to see them again is what I'm saying. All right. But again, when you work with variables, they give you the syntax on page 36. All variables must begin with a dollar sign. Following the, the, the variable name, the next letter must either be a letter or the next character or an underscore. I just showed you one with an underscore. All right, no, I didn't. Yes, I did. Dollar sign, underscore, post. Dollar sign, underscore, get. All right, those are ones that we just looked at. So that's, it, that it's a variable, dollar sign, underscore. And the other way you can do it is, again, like we looked at, dollar sign, age. You can't, you can't have the next character be blank or a special character or a number. After you do that, the rest of the variable name can hold underscores and letters and numbers. All right. You can't use a, um, a reserved word in P of PHP. You can't use that as a variable name, which is really bad because technically, tech, I believe at least I could be wrong on this, but I don't think I am. If I really wanted to for some reason, I could do something like this. And it wouldn't, it would not, this would not at all be the same as this. That would be a really stupid thing to do, but I think you can do that. Not, and, and since there, this is a loosely typed language like JavaScript, you can create an integer variable and call it int. I wouldn't do that, but you can do it. All right. So again, that's just some of the stuff that if you choose to do it, you can. That's all. Again, function names are not case sensitive. Variable names are case sensitive. All right. Now, as far as Java, or Java, as far as PHP is concerned, since this is like JavaScript, since this is a loosely typed language, I can come in here and do this. Then a little bit later on in my code, I can come through there and do this. And then a little bit later on in my code. I can come through there and do this. See what we're doing? You can do that. It's, it's totally legit, just like it is in JavaScript. All right. If you have a variable that you're creating, notice age, it's meant to be a variable name that reflects what it's holding. That's one of the things I want you to shoot for. All right. Because people always say, well, how do you grade these things? Well, one thing I look for is I don't want a program that's filled with x, y, and z for variable names. That's just silly to do. The only time that it's OK to have that is if for the name of a counter or something like that. That's fine. All right, But otherwise, I want you to use names like this. And really, even though you can do this, since it's called age, it really should only hold numbers. Also, PHP makes absolutely no, no distinction between pi being something like that or something like this. And what I mean is it's got a number type. It doesn't care if it's an integer or if it's a float. It doesn't care. It's just of type number, period. That's all it is. It's of type number. All right. We already talked about the quote, double quotes versus single quotes, the difference. All right. That's all of chapter two. I've just covered everything that's in chapter two with you. I'm going to hold off for just a second on chapter three, which is HTML and forms, because that's what we're doing next week. We're going to hit all the, all the material that's in that chapter. All right? But the next chapter after that, we're going to start on this, and then we'll take a break. Please tell me, Mike, when it's 3.50. All right? Chapter four is entitled Using Numbers. You already know almost everything that's in there. All right? Like what? Well, if I create a form, and I've got a field that's called salary, and I put in my salary, it actually does go in there as text, right? Okay. But I can grab that since this is a, uh, since this is a uh, loosely typed language. If you remember this morning when we were in the ASP.NET class and we used the convert dot to int 30, you don't have to do that here because your variables can hold anything. So even though it's a string in there, all right, I can do this. And PHP lets me do a lot of this stuff. If I do this, 
all right and then I come down here and I do something like dollar sign age plus plus I could be wrong here somebody wants to write a program they can I think that'll give you 22 I don't think it has any problem with you doing that that doesn't mean that does yeah it doesn't mean you should do it but but I think that that'll work so in other words if it sees something that's a string but it has only digits in it it treats it as though, as though it's a number all right again just because you can do that doesn't mean that you should do that all right there 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 is like there is an is number and that actually would fail an is number all right because it would see the double quotes it doesn't care what's inside but there are a bunch of string functions too that you can use or you could you know it, so there's a lot of ways that you can get around a lot of different things math is the, is the same kind of math that we've always been performing so there's nothing really new in there as far as what the math is precedence is the same I just showed you this so just like we had before there's plus plus and there's minus minus we all know that that adds one or, or subtracts one you can use it prefix or postfix remember all the other usual suspects that we had in other words I can say dollar sign age equals seven I don't know why I'd want to do that but I can then I can say dollar sign age plus equals five or I can say dollar sign age minus equals six I can say dollar sign age times equal two and dollar sign age divide equal three and dollar sign age modulo equals two bless you and dollar sign age if I if this was a string I can use the dot equal for string so all those things that you've learned before all right those combined operators they all work in here also and they're really no different as far as what they do and how they work etc same with greater than and less than now one thing that's different bless you that just so you see this I'm glad you brought that up so if I come through here and I say dollar sign num1 equals 17 dollar sign num2 equals and this is a bad name but I'm doing it like this on purpose all right and I write code and I say this is that going to give me true or false is that going to give me true or false true if I want to make sure that not only does it hold the same value but it's the same type three equal signs that's called the equality identity operator so it checks both is the value the same and is it of the same type and I don't know if we went over in JavaScript but JavaScript supports that also same kind of an operator what's really weird is the not equal now the not equal identity now looks like that but all equality does is it says does it physically hold the same value and this has this is a 1 7 not 17 it's a 1 7 so is this so that the first way we, that we looked at it that will register is true so always always even if you're checking this if you look through their documentation they say you should always when you're making if checks like that you should always use the triple equal sign which is identity equality or equality identity depending on the book you're reading you can do some simple formatting remember the round so in other words what do we have here num2 equals 17.567 all right so I can echo here here's a question for you I'm asking dollar sign round dollar sign num1 what's that going to print out is that is is you're right let's make it two so you're right I'm wrong all right, now what's it going to print out? Yes. So if I want it to print out 17.6, I tell it to round to one decimal place. I can round to as many places as I want. This becomes important when you're starting to do work with dollars and cents and stuff like that, where, where the number of decimal places you have is important. All right? There's also a command in here that looks like this. So let's, let's assume for a second I, I, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to write a literal number. If I type in this, all right, and don't ask me why I do this, but let's just say I did. All right. 
And what that will do is when it prints it out, it'll print uh, what? 1, 234, 567, 890 percent sign or a decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's a built in number format function. And there's different things that you can do with that also. All right. How do you find out more? You go to php.net, you put in there number underscore format, and you just look at the examples that are in there. And that's it for chapter four on numbers. So let's take a break. It's 348. Let's come back at four. And I want to hit on chapter five, which is strings, and chapter six. I believe, or, or, or is six the one we're going to skip? Oh, which is on control structures. Then we'll be all caught up. All right.